Hello friends, today we will discuss a poem from Flamingo. The title of the poem is An Elementary School Classroom in Islam, written by Stephen Spender. Before we proceed, let us talk a bit about the poet. Stephen Spender, his full name was Sir Stephen Harold Spender, born in 1909 and died in the year 1995. He was an English poet and essayist who took keen interest in the socialist school of thought, which explains his stance regarding the paradox of teaching elementary school children in Islam. He tells in this poem that it is a mere wish fulfillment to think that we can teach children who are hungry in an empty stomach. So if you see the poem that we are reading here, it has got a socialistic band of mind. The poet is thinking about the have-nots, the children of Islam, those who rarely have any kind of opportunity to get quality education. These points are being discussed here. Now, before we proceed reading the poem, let's talk about what we are going to see here. The poem presents the paradox of teaching elementary school children in Islam, as I already told you, Marxian ideas, that is the base structure, fulfillment of the basic needs of human beings are much more important than thinking about ideas or even teaching. So that paradox is presented here and the poet is presenting that in a very wonderful manner. One cannot hope to provide education to children who are poor and hungry. A feeling of health, hopelessness coupled by the actual lack of bright future suggest that the very purpose of educating these children has been defeated. All right? It is the poet's belief that it is only up to the policy makers who can address the problem of poverty and its attendant problems like malnourishment and inherited diseases that can hope to provide an education that is empowering in the true sense. Now, as the title suggest Islam school. <coughs> Let's talk about the poem in detail. Far, far from gusty waves, these children faces like rootless weeds, the hair turn around their pale. The tall girl with her weighed down head, the paper steaming boy with red eyes. The stunted, unlucky hair of twisted bones, reciting a father's knowledge disease. His lessons from his desk, at back of the dim class, one unnoted, sweet and young. His eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game, in tree room other than this. On sore cream walls, donation, Shakespeare's hat, cloudless at dawn, civilized dome, riding all cities, bellied, flowery trowelless valley, open-handed man, avoiding the world its world, and yet for these children, these windows, not this map, their world, where all their future is painted with a fog, a narrow street sealed in with the lead sky, far, far from rivers, caves and stars of words. Surely, Shakespeare is wicked. The map a bad example, with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. For lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night. On their slack heave, these children wear skins pit through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle beads of stones. All of their time and space are foggy slum, so block their maps with slums as big as stone. 
unless governors, inspector, visitor. This map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs. Break or break, open till they break the town and so the children to green fields and make their world run azure on gold sand and let their tongues run naked into books. The white and green leaves open, history theirs whose language is the sun. Now let us discuss the poem in detail. So as you can see the title of the poem is an elementary school classroom in Islam. So here the word N, that's an indefinite article. So here we are not talking about one particular school, but one of many such schools, elementary school. Elementary means a school for children between the age of 6 to 12. Now, the place where the education is being taken place here is it's a slum, an area in the city that is very poor and where the houses are dirty and are found in a bad condition. If you see the poet who is from England, he talks about the slums of England. The poem reflects the farces of having compulsory education but offering no real future for the thousands of children of the poor. The poet states here that there is much more to education than free schooling that is quality education that we should think about. So let's get back to standard number one again. If you see here, the first standard, it presents an urban background. We find slums mostly in the urban background, right? So that's what it is. And in the first standard, the poet describes the students in the classroom. And he also states that they are neglected poverty stricken, their faces are pale without energy. Alright, now line number one. Far, far from gusty waves, these children faces. Now why the repetition of the word far, far? That means it emphasizes the separation, division in the society. Gusty waves, that's a symbol. It symbolizes energy, something which is lacking here in the case of the children. They are far, far away, separated, divided from civilization. These children faces like rootless weeds. So you can see here, simile, the betray device used, like rootless weeds. The hair turned around their paler. The word paler means pale, okay lack of energy or blood they are rootless that means they belong nowhere they do not have their roots means they do not know where they belong to they are also unwanted their hair uncombed the hair done round the pala means they have got uncombed uncamped hair that looks like the wheat then the tall girl with her weight down head there is a tall girl now we can ask a question why would one's head be weighed down what may be the reason now that's in metaphor you see here this depicts the sadness and shame that the girl is going through for which his head is down maybe another reason is that she has got the weight of her family to take care of her family, to earn for her family. And that burden is there for which the head is down. All right. The paper seeming boy with red size. You can see another image here. Paper seeming boy. This can a boy be paper seeming? When can this happen? That's the metaphor again. This shows that the boy, the, the boy is thin, that emaciated, that's because of malnutrition, not getting proper food to eat. His eyes pop out of his thin face. 
it looks very thin. That's why the poet says here, the paper seeming boy with the rat's eyes, as if the eyes of the rats, his eyes has come out. Okay. The stunted, unlucky hair of twisted bones, reciting a father's knowledge disease, his lessons from his desk. Now let's see. What have they inherited? These children, what they have inherited? They have inherited the poor physical conditions of their parents. As a result of their poverty, they are unable to grow as it is depicted here. And as they should grow, as a child should grow. Someone who receives an inheritance, in this case, not something he would want the child he has inherited the disease of his father he has inherited poor physical condition poverty of his father now reciting his lessons from his desk means he is repeating he is not repeating something like any lessons rather he is living a life of poverty at back of the gym class one unnoted, sweet and young. His eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in the tree room other than this. So, the young boy who is presented or brought in the image of the young boy here is probably too innocent and naive to have been affected by poverty like the others. He is mentally absent from the class. He is outside in the tree, in a tree house, looking at the squirrels. His innocence is contrasted with the weight down look of the tall girl and the paper thin body of the other boy. So here a contrast is brought like the other children who are there in the classroom who are like uh, looking like paper seeming, paper thin boy or paper thin body of the boy or the girl whose head was down this boy is something different contrastingly he is looking outside dreaming of something different now let's get to the second stanza as you can see the second stanza it depicts the classroom in the first stanza we saw description of the children by the poet in the second standard the poet here talks about the classroom just as in the case of the student it is neglected as the students are neglected the slum children they are not getting food the basic requirement of their life similarly the classroom is also neglected you would see a few posters which are donated which adorn the walls of the classroom these are the descriptions here now see on sour cream walls, donation, Shakespeare's hat. Now, why sour cream? Because the classroom wall, it looks dull, pale. These are, this is evidence of neglect. It expresses, expresses a sickening atmosphere in the classroom. It is symbolic of the hopelessness that is surrounded the students' lives. Then you would see a few posters decorated in the classrooms like Shakespeare. Shakespeare is symbolic of classic literature indicating great academic knowledge. Another thing is that Shakespeare is a symbol of intellect, knowledge. Okay, then cloudless at dawn, civilized dawn, riding all cities. What is cloudless? That contrast with their dull and foggy lives. Cloudless means without cloud. But here, the life of the slum children, it's foggy. It's filled with darkness. As their future are not bright or clear, but rather vague and dismal. So similar kind of conditions is portrayed here by the poet. Then you would see here description of civilized dome riding all cities like buildings with domes that souls are sim sim which is symbol of power and wealth so you will see here pictures of William Shakespeare then some pictures of civilized dome okay then there is valid flowery trellis valley a beautiful picture of a valley now 
let me tell you here Tyrol is an alpine state of Austria this valley represents natural beauty a strong contrast with their derelict life means the beauty here which is brought in through that picture is very much opposite to the life the the life that the slum dwellers are leading they are deprived of the bounties of nature they do not even get proper air or proper light open-handed man avoiding the wall its wall there is also a man which is open-handed why open-handed offers itself to them it is open to them the world map represents the world outside the classroom which is there to explore and know for the children but it is without or we can say it is out of the reach of the children because the world of the slum children is their narrow street where all their futures painted with the fog now here the economic disparities and social injustice are presented which prevent these children from having any future you would see here the repetition of the word fog it emphasizes the dull existence and the bleak future for the children a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky lead sky heavily polluted and dull dimly lighted sky emphasizes the inhuman unhygienic living conditions in which the children are living far far again repetition emphasizes the separation as we have already discussed okay the hopeless life that these children are living all right devoid of any beauty of nature far far from rivers caves and stars of the world they are far away from all the beauty of nature now let's get to stanza number 3 see only six verses we can now in this stanza you would see the poet commenting on the posters decorating the wall the poet also questioning the wisdom of exposing the students to such pictures which they will never such pictures or such kind of things which is out of reach of their life which they can never experience in their entire life so what the poet is telling here surely shakespeare is wicked and the map is bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal all the things which are actually here portrayed or which are decorated adorning the wall of the classroom are crucially temptation for the children according to the poet all the pictures and donations are a bad example to these children the pictures of ships and sons and love that tempt them to choose the wrong path and steal so in line number 19 and 20 the poet is saying for lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night that's a question mark slyly furtively secretly sneakily Okay, secretly they are meaning the word slightly secretly. So overcrowded and confined, restricted kind of places that they are living, their their lives, you know, uh, is it's a kind of cramped holes, which is filled with darkness, endless night. Next in the next line, the poet tells on their slag heap. Now see, it's a metaphor, slag heap. how there's a metaphor the whole environment is described here as slag heap like a heap of garbage this refers to the waste material of mines of different industries which are like kept near the locality of the slum dwellers right these children in the next line the poet says these children wear skins peeped through by bones now why were peeped through by were, were skins peeped through by bones that's again matter for a direct comparison is made between their skin and the bone now as if the bones are peeping outside they are personified here yeah you may get a question here which part of speech or uh, which literary device is used here you have to say it's personification the bones are personified here as if they are looking outside from the skin which is indication of the unhealthy 
uh, environment of the mind in which these children doesn't get any medical care all right and in the next line and spectacles of steel with mended glass like button beads on stone spectacles means glasses which are mended emphasizes the poverty and hopeless situation like button beads on stone again the literary device symbolic symbolic of the sadder life of the children all of their time and space are foggy slum so blood their names with slums has biggest to for children in such a bad condition their time and space are foggy miserable slums therefore the maps on their walls should be blotted with huge slums and false promises should not be made rather than showing them such kind of beautiful pictures or portrait of william shakespeare what the poet is telling blot their maps with slums as big as to means so them pictures of slums so them their reality okay now let's move to the next uh, part of the poem <clears throat> the poet if you see here he is calling upon governor inspector and visitor who represent power and position to review the system before it's too late and through this the revised system should empower the children to break away from the cycles of poverty and deprivation the poet is also urging the civilized people to help them enjoy all the facilities such as blue sky sunshine sea waves fresh air good and sufficient nutritious food so he is telling let the pages of wisdom be open to them means let them read let them be educated and the tongues may run freely on the white leaves of books provide them proper education good quality education only those people and he tells at the end history of your social language is not only those people find a place in history whose language has the warmth and power of the sun all right so this map becomes their window and these windows that sat upon their lives like caragams the windows which show the students the scene of the slum outside close up on their lives like caragams now what's caragam as it is written in the poem a series of underground tunnels used for burying dead people unless something is done for these children their environment becomes like graveyard like catacombs and they will live inside those small buried underground holes as a dead bodies so unless a governor an inspector or a visitor feels pity on these students and encourages them these children will be doomed that is what the poet is telling now break or break open trail they break the town so break or break repetition of the word so what is that is needed here needed to be done this is the poet's call for them for the people in power they should come out to break free from this social injustice they should keep make these children free from the social injustice break away from this miserable circumstances and that will happen only through education and so the children green fields create hope and inspiration for them and make their world run as or on gold sand brighten of their lives and let their tongues run naked into books the wide and green leaves open give them a hunger for knowledge study education that is what the poet is telling and so the children green fields and make their world run as or on gold sands and let their tongues run naked into books the wide and green leaves open these are all images that the poet portrays here a world without boundaries in contrast to their dismal restricted life that they are living the world which is restricted okay history there so language is the sun education the 
so the point is telling education is the only means of upliftment means they can create history they can be civilized only through proper education that is what the poet says here in this poem now what does the poet want for the children of Islam if you read the poem you see here that he wants the children to get rid of the dull dreary lifestyle of the school they should have opportunities to experience the joys and beauty of the world outside they should experience life in the life of nature they should also break free become aware of their rights and they should be educated so that's what the poet says here now what about us what can we do in this context we must appreciate the educational opportunities that we have and we should do things which are in our hand for the upliftment of these people. Now, here uh, is a critical appreciation of the poem. If you see, the tone of the poem is rather somber and profound, mainly because the poet is trying to express a rather serious problem that affects our society at large. Now, you can go through this, it will be helpful. And this, uh, like, uh, is uh, the things of uh, the points that we have already discussed. Now, a vocabulary exercise for you. Gusty waves, paler, sore came walls, knowledge, catacombs, cramped, doom, sly, and on the other side, you will see the meanings which are not quite written in order. So, you have to find and write in order. Uh, like gusty waves, as you can find it here, mm, mainstream of the society, paler, that refers to the uh, dull color, the face, sore cream walls, dull color of walls, gnarled, underground holes, catacombs, restricted living conditions, crantos, doom, death, sly, cunning. Now a few questions, comprehension questions that you can go through. Thank you very much. I hope you have understood the poem. That's all for today.